the AMC Pacer, a car the press immediately dubbed as a fishbowl on wheels. This most quirky of cars came from an equally quirky and revered car manufacturer, American Motors, and it arrived in showrooms on February 28, 1975. To say Pacer was a bit of a shock would be an understatement. The teardrop shape and a glass surface area that was equal to over a third of Pacer's overall body surfaces gave the appearance it was from outer space. Most shocking was Pacer's width. Though many feet shorter than many cars of the American market, Pacer was just as wide as the average full-size car. AMC was proud of this fact and marketed Pacer as America's first wide small car. But this was not unexpected, as AMC strived to stand out by being different, the quality for which many lament the demise of this most American of American automobile manufacturers. And on the list of American automotive heroes, Richard Teague would certainly have to be considered right up there with the best of the best. Teague was responsible for many of AMC's greatest hits, and that is no small accomplishment considering AMC's consistent underdog status. Teague's earliest sketch concept for AMC's radical new offering date all the way back to 1971. Decades before Toyota, Pacer featured a tall greenhouse to allow maximum headroom in the shortest wheelbase possible. There was even an early prototype concept connected to Pacer that was christened Hellcat. In every way, Richard Teague's vision was focused on the future. Of course, before Pacer, there was Gremlin, another Teague success that demonstrated AMC's incredible ability to deliver a unique and compelling competitor with minimal resources. Unlike Gremlin, Pacer was designed more in the spirit of Pinto than it was a clean sheet design. An incredible accomplishment for America's automotive underdog, AMC. And AMC inadvertently had the good fortune of avoiding major engine controversy, such as found in the Vega when its plans for a rotary engine fell through. Indeed, there was intense pressure at the time, particularly from the press, to feature a cutting-edge engine technology to accompany the radical styling. As luck would have it, Pacer was denied this technology. Automotive engineers the world over were discovering the rotary engine was not the magic bullet it was initially built as. answer very widely to say we've got a wide engine range in production right now. Uh, four cylinders in line, overhead valve engines. Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, your present range is good. Cams. give you that. But, but what about the rotary uh, engine? I mean, Mazda look as if they're proving something with their Wankel engines. Yes, well, uh, I say when, we, uh, when I say we've got our options wide open, we have on, on Wankel too, because... Have you should... made a Wankel engine yourselves? Uh, we've got prototype uh, test engines running. What are your and, uh, views of it so far? Well, our views are these, that uh, uh, we know all about, uh, I won't say problems, but I can say some doubts about sealing. Yeah. The acceleration and power is excellent. Piston seals were very problematic, which led to real reliability concerns. But even worse, the economy was very poor, resulting in mileage ratings of 16 miles per gallon, where an equivalent traditional engine could achieve 20 miles per gallon or more. AMC had planned to source their rotary engines from GM, but this was not to be. Pacer would evolve to survive. Gone was the newfangled rotary engine, and in its place were tried and proven AMC V6 engines. This required expensive firewall revisions and other changes AMC could barely afford. But abandoning the Pacer project was not an option at this point. Too much had been invested by this tiny automotive manufacturer. Pacer's introduction for 1975 was a success, 
as there were few competitors during this year of unexpected energy shortages. Striking exteriors, such as this example in a shade dubbed Brandywine, featured equally innovative interiors. The wide, small car description played prominently in advertisements of the time, in an attempt to explain the unconventional overall shape. The sculpted lines were truly unlike anything else in the road, so traditional details, such as two-tone paint and bright work accents, were prominently featured. A 22-gallon fuel tank helped make up for the fact that Pacer's overall curb weight was considerable. AMC had been diligent in striving to meet pending federal safety regulations. These efforts resulted in over 900 pounds of additional weight as compared to Pacer's original design. While these government safety regulations added significantly to overall curb weight, these same regulations conflicted with other government regulations to reduce fuel consumption. To distract from less than ideal fuel economy, Pacer would offer attractive trim packages, such as the Pacer X, that featured vinyl bucket seats, a sports steering wheel, and custom trim. Additional innovation came in the form of isolated front and rear suspension systems, which kept noise, vibration, and harshness to a minimum. AMC took care of Pacer buyers with a free loaner car program, should anything go wrong during the first 12 months or 12,000 mile warranty period and Pacer interiors featured a cockpit-like instrument arrangement that was quite rich-looking compared to most of its humble competition. For its second year, Pacer would continue to work hard to justify its unique appearance. By now, word was getting out that Pacer was something unique. Maybe not pretty, but unique. Pacer was quickly becoming one of those quirky little cars that a few understood and truly appreciated. From a passenger door that is four inches longer than the driver's side to accommodate rear seat entry, to a wide model range, Pacer worked hard to appeal to those that traditionally purchased larger automobiles. Even by 1970 standards, Pacer provided an incredible diversity in interior appointments. From basic vinyl to elaborate Native American themes, there truly was something for everyone. And options were just as diverse options that could transform this basic transportation into something resembling near luxury. The three engine variations really didn't vary much, but they did offer some performance and economy options for individual needs and preferences. This again was another example of American Motors Corporation offering the best it had to the widest audience possible. The Pacer Wagon was introduced for 1977. The wagon featured side vent windows and a more upright look to provide Pacer with a more traditional profile. 
AMC literature was much more personable than typical literature at the time, conveying a sense that the people of AMC truly did care about their customers. The Buyer Protection Plan provided 12 months of peace of mind, including innovative for the time features, such as a toll-free support hotline and special trip interruption protection. All of this made Pacer the right choice for the family that dared to embrace a vision of a bold new future. Pacer was so different, AMC would soon feature it prominently along its other offerings, such as Gremlin. The new wagon was only four inches longer than the standard offering, but did provide considerably more cargo area. Foam cushioned bench seats and rally perforated vinyl and color key carpeting were amongst the highlighted features. Upholstery continued to be amongst the most striking of any offering, foreign or domestic. The DL package continued as the upscale offering, featuring Navajo-themed seat fabrics and a variety of other interior and exterior details that were otherwise optional. Pacer for 1978 continued the tradition of a variation on a single theme, with minor color combo changes and continuous refinement. A new V8 option provided some more punch, particularly for highway cruising. Body styles were unchanged with the wagon drifting more towards an upscale near luxury offering, particularly as equipped by most dealer orders. Interior accommodations continued to embarrass most mainstream offerings with premium upholstery and luxurious door card materials. And of course, numerous options were available to make a Pacer your very own. AMC for 1979 was lean and mean, offering only the products its loyal fans demanded. Fortunately for Pacer, life would go on for another couple of seasons. Interior accoutrements were more luxurious than ever, as Pacer had been given many upgrades in an effort to remote its existence. Brochure images reflected this, featuring Pacer in glamorous settings with beautiful people. But underneath all the bright work and two-tone glory was a car for the everyday people. That honest car that offered an enormous array of luxury and convenience value-added features. Among those features continued to be a buyer protection plan that ranked amongst the best in the industry for the time. As Pacer and AMC approached the ether, it was clear this most special of car companies had produced the most special of cars. For me, right out there with my favorite childhood cartoon heroes, there is AMC and the somewhat cartoonishly styled Pacer.
my family may have mostly driven full-sized Ford products, but there was always that forbidden love of the amazing little car from an amazing little car company, AMC. Pacer is the passion we truly miss in today's automotive offerings. For its final year, Pacer was clearly on its path to sunset, as the more traditional and equally worthy sibling Concord and Spirit offerings took to the spotlight. As twilight set for Pacer and AMC, many could not have imagined this small, wide car could capture the hearts of so many even to this day. Pacer represents the ultimate sign-off of any American automaker, and we hope to see them sometime soon, maybe hanging out with Oldsmobile, Plymouth, and Mercury. A salute to the automotive heroes of our childhood. Gone, but never forgotten. And of course, we must also not forget the incredible men and women that created these incredible memories. And that is the story of Pacer. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I sincerely appreciate your support as I work to bring many more of these cartels as things slowly return to normal for myself and my family. Thank you very much. Tucker, quick as a nail, let's all listen to Joe Burr's car tales.